It's kind of crazy how much we cast and that we continue to find so many events to cast as well. Alright guys, so if you do enjoy the content, obviously there's a bunch of ways to support. Subscribing is a great way. You get the emotes, uh, you get the sub icon when you chat in the chat, you get replay packs. Subbing is the one that we really like to push because it really is a great way to help grow the channel. And of course, subbing is a, such a kind of a... For a streamer as well, you look at your subs and you're like, well, that's a bit more of a consistent income because it's, you know, you're not suddenly, unless you literally go AFK and don't stream for a month, which I did in November, you're not going to just suddenly have half your subs disappear. So it's a bit more of a stable income that's kind of nice for a streamer. But, um, but yeah, anyways, um, there's other ways to support you if you don't want to sub, if you'd rather donate, if you'd rather go on Patreon or whatever. Check those out. As we, uh, of course, if you can't afford to, then there's other ways to as well. Just watching obviously helps. Uh, you can do the survey, exclamation mark survey in the chat. will explain a bit more about that. That supports the stream. Um, you can just hit the follow button. Again, keep on watching. Watch the ads. All of that adds up as well to keep us uh, here and keep us bringing you guys the content. Bottom side of the map, Blue Terran player from Team Liquid. Going to be Euthermal. He is going to be going up against the Red Zerg to the top side. It is Impact. Maybe dropping down a hatch gas pool for himself in the early stages right now. So setting up into this, we're going to be seeing some overlords moving on down as well. So a couple of overlords here, one over the right hand side, one kind of through the center, very stunned stuff initially. New thermal, he's just going to go into the 2 1 1 build order. No 3 x sweep or anything like that. Just going to be uh, setting up to um, play that early stim pack and sort of just go from there. Didn't you thermal play nice yesterday in Nation Wars? That's Sonic Pineapple. Yes, he did. He uh, played him in, uh, well, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before. And it was a draw in their first game. And then it was Euphemal who ended up winning, which was pretty, um, it was pretty crazy. It was um, pretty interesting. So, uh, so yeah. Nice is actually pretty good. Um, nice is better than a lot of people give him credit for. And, He's sort of very, <laughs> in, a, in a funny way, he's sort of very much so like Haas, in the sense that he's this player who does a lot of the time do these cheesy all-ins and, and more aggressive all-ins that, and there's some things that kind of don't make sense, but it's very Haas-esque. And uh, because he's Taiwanese, very easy to relate him to Haas as well, but he's actually quite a good player. He's sort of like Haas, he can also to some extent macro as well. So it's uh, kind of interesting to watch him play. We see him a lot in the OSC, uh, kind of the, uh, the Chinese events, I guess. Leifeng Cups, SGL Cups, we see him a lot in. We see him in the OSC All Stars a few times. A few times. Just going to be seeing the uh, Evil Chamber here, starting up that plus one Carapace. And we've seen the Carapace upgrade. Just coming in, a few Marines on the way out, and Stimpak about a quarter of the way done. The Marines just continue to uh, add on up together. Look to see what's going to be happening. So Marines just gathering together right now. And we're going to be seeing these couple of Zerglings moving forwards towards the ramp. Looking to see what they might be able to uh, get up to. Ling's actually going to get pushed away right now though. And over to the right hand side we're just going to be seeing well this overall positioned. What's Impact actually seen so far? Not a lot, just the first few Marines. Euphemal keeping the rest of his Marines back of course to try and keep them hidden. The less information he gives away for free the better of course. As now we're going to be seeing these uh, Two medivacs just dropping down, uh, sorry, starport just, uh, two medivacs on the way out as the starport drops down onto the reactor. Got my set of words out there in the end, I couldn't decide which order I wanted to say them in. I was going to be seeing these couple of queens from impact will move on down to the low ground as well. Queen, on the way up on the main base, going to be teamed to the right hand side. Just going to be, uh... Seen everything setting up here basically as we expected to. Again, more Marines continuing to collect together. We've got 15 of them right now as these Marines are actually moving forward. So that's going to be a dead overlord immediately here. And so here we go then. 16 Marines join up as the Medivacs move on out. And New Thermal uses this build to great effect against game time in the earlier ZVT series we saw today. As we're going to be seeing the uh, Medivacs getting ready to drop and set up. A couple of things are going to spread themselves out in a couple different directions. And these two Medivacs are New Thermal. Again, going all the way up this left-hand side. Let's see how they are going to be uh, setting up here. As we're going to be seeing these queens join up together as well. This creep tumor continue to push out over here. And Euphemal, again, initially, we'll just be looking to try and uh, pick off a couple of creep tumors. 
And that's what he does. Just one creep team there, forcing units. He's actually going to go for a queen here. He does get the queen kill. Medivac's taking some damage. He's actually going to lose a medivac right now, so he's going to lose this one. But he's to start a step away as he needs to pull this other medivac back. Kills off a lot of the zerglings, but does lose a lot of marines in the process. I guess our overall question becomes, was it worthwhile? It was pretty even the trade. His next medivac comes in and haven't traded so much already. It'll make it difficult for him to keep on trading now with these extra marines. Just because, I mean, yes, he traded out himself, but it's so much easier. If, you know, the queens become a bigger part of this if there's only still this many uh, kind, of, uh, kind of marines around. Bit of mind setting up is actually Ufam who gets behind the mineral line, picks up seven workers out of nowhere. Just a little bit of a slow response there by Impact is now going to be seeing, well, looks as though these units will just fully commit to trying to clean up whatever they can. One more queen going down, and this medivac will lift up. So one medivac escaping in total at the end of all of this. And these queens, again, good damage done basically. And we're going to be seeing more drones continue to roll on in. So more drones continue to roll on in this lair. Starting up as well at this point. So lair on the way and it's going to be seeing the Bane and uh going to be finishing up as well. In fact, pretty much uh, queued up with everything he needs. Actually, this drop might do a little bit more. Widowmine picks up a single kill. Not from Tier Major, but he does cancel the fourth base, which is nice. And he is able to get away from there as well with all of the Marines still intact. Lair halfway done. As we see now, the plus one melee coming in for Impact. Interestingly enough, didn't go into the second Evo chamber, probably because it's there so late, so there's no reason to, because he can't start uh, plus two just yet. So, um, yeah, just going to be uh, heading in towards this uh, plus one melee attack now. It's going to bring us up to plus one, plus one in total. And it will be one, one upgrades apiece as we enter the kind of mid stages of this game now. Yufem with his armory on the way will set up into two, two nice and quickly. He's got third CC ready to float on out. His extra barracks are finishing. React on the factory, so he's ready to start building some widow mines as well. And, uh, and yeah, Marine's going to stim forward, he's going to be trying to get this fourth base again. But it's definitely possible that he does actually kill this off here, especially if he's got some Liberators to reinforce. Depends where he puts the Liberators though, because he might just send the Liberators around to try and hit a Mineral Line, which would probably make a little bit more sense, I guess, realistically. The Liberators won't get enough done as Ufimo does pick up the kill, actually sacrifices the units to get the kill. No cancel from uh, Impact which means that he is going to be missing out on 300 minerals, as well as not having his fourth base to mine from still. You've only pulling these liberators up to the top side once again. Spire coming up to being about halfway done here shortly. Sporecrawler going to come in behind the mineral line, and again, these few zergs some impact just setting out the front as he tries to re-establish the third base, or the fourth base, sorry, for the second time this game. Third time this game, even. We'll learn to count with Wardy. After one comes two, and after two comes three. Not two again. Who would have fought? Plus two, plus two from you, will continue to uh, set on up and, well, a little bit of Ling Bane still around as we're going to be seeing the uh, Marine getting shut down here pretty quick. So Marine gets shut down. Again, these two medevacs from you, will are just moving around looking to see what else might happen next. A few queens in position, just uh, slap behind the mineral line and here we go. These uh, couple of medevacs are going to start moving forwards. Going to start unloading here. He's going to be seeing well, one queen very quickly getting targeted, but doesn't go down. Nice transfuses. The Liberators will pick off two of the queens. And the Medivacs will come in and load once again. Yufim will push in the front with a set of units as well, looking to clean out some creep while the rest of this is going on towards the main. Gets one tier, but that's about it. Lings and Bane's in position. And these Medivacs still trying to fight. I love this. Using the Liberators, just trying to zone away a bunch of units and just lifting up every single time. Now the Mutas coming in, though, which means these Medivacs just have to unload the Marines and just be done with it. He's not going to be able to keep them, keep them alive. The meter is going to be the real savior here to shut this down. As Bane Speed about to finish as well. Link Bane meter mid game for impact. Well and truly going to be on the way here. Set up now. As we see, Ufem will, will have the one big advantage to play with, and that is going to be his plus two attack upgrade. Something which a Zerg player does not go into just yet because he still doesn't have a second evolution chamber. So, very weird, and uh, he will be very far behind in upgrades then throughout. And obviously, the final set of upgrades from Ufem with a 3 3. Will come in as well, and that's going to put him into a great position to keep on trading, but has to be careful because right now it's a lot of Ling Bane, and Ufilm was in the middle of nowhere. You can split up all over the place. Widow Mines are trying to burrow, but they're getting taken down before they can get any shots off, and Impact is going to clean up so much over here, and Ufilm will realize he just made a couple mistakes right there. And that is going to be game, and Impact is starting to take some shape here as we jump into our second game. We're going to be seeing a very aggressive uh, second game right away. So we better start introducing these guys. So the top right hand side, the blue Zerg player is Impact. And it is going to be down to the bottom left, our red Terran player, Euphermal. He's going to proxy Rax up to this top side. However, 
And we're going to be seeing Impact. He drops in a gas pool. So he's going to have an earlier gas, an earlier pool, and that's immediately going to be a big step towards being able to hold this off right from the very get-go. We're going to be seeing the free racks just setting up right here. And obviously no gas, so it's not going to be Reapers or anything. It's just proxy Marines and an impact. Well, he won't see this until those overlords get to the other side. He's not drawn scan, which isn't a very common thing to do. But he is going to have to get in. He's going to have a faster link speed than usual. He's going to be able to go into roaches a bit more easily if you'd like to as well. Very, um... Very interested to see how this is, um... How this is going to go, so... We've seen these uh, marines starting on up right now. Starting on up, and Ethan will just gather these units together right now to see what he can, uh... Set up to. Lots of marines on the way. Rotron is coming down in the, uh... Back of this mineral line as well right now, so setting up into that, and... We've seen an overlord from Impact just moving again slowly but surely down towards the bottom left hand side. These Marines, SCVs all joining up together. The Roach Warren on the way as Impact obviously just had the intention of going into like a bit of an aggressive play himself here. And that might just lead to him sort of hard countering new thermal from the very start. These first two things are going to see right now no CC. And in a way. Impact is going to be laughing. If this was Reapers, it might actually be very good for you, Fimmel, because Reapers can continue to trade quite nicely, whereas, well, Impact, yeah, well, Marines against Roaches, not going to have the best of times. First Hatchery is actually already taking quite a bit of damage. SCVs get pulled to get rid of the Lings in the Mineral Line. Impact, why are you not making your Roaches, buddy? Like, come on, he's had a Roachron finish for so long here, and yet he doesn't start the Roaches. It's a big mistake. Can't afford little mistakes like that right now because it's going to be a pretty uh, intense situation. He does lose the hatchery. I didn't think this would happen quite so quickly. But I guess he just gives it up. Obviously, Roach is already on the way. Seven of them in total. There's a lot of Marines down here. And these uh, Marines are going to move up and look to see what else they can do. Just going to see these Roaches pushing down. and Oh, Marines have to be careful where they're going to go. I love this. Overlord's going to pop out and the is just going to be underneath. I don't love it from impact. Like, it's a big mistake to actually make the Overlord on the low ground. One Ravager comes forward. He's going to take some shots already. Marines st stepping in. Good stuff from these Marines. He tries to cancel this next Overlord and build once again. Try and keep Impact in the Supply Block. Cross Bars will reach from the high ground. This Overlord is indeed going to pop out, but it will again just go down instantly. Like, it doesn't even begin. Like, why not just cancel it? Because it's going to go down anyways. You're not going to gain anything from that. You at least got your Minerals back, right? At least get your Minerals back. We're going to see these uh, Cross Bars continue to drop. He's going to be seeing the uh, bunker taking a little bit more damage again. Roaches taking some damage here as they get pushed back by the Marines. Ravages once more coming in and trying to see what else they can do. It's finally the first bunker again. Busted down. And for you, Femmel, this isn't such a bad situation. Just has to be careful of kind of the Roaches and Ravages if they do get out here. Moving across the map could be uh, pretty powerful. So, again, it's only Marines. And as these Roaches and Ravages gather up together, especially the Ravages, they do a lot of damage to those Marines very quickly. So... Let's see what might happen here. First, the going down. Not connected on too much just yet. Hatchery will get set to be taken once again. And we'll see the sooner Impact gets back up in towards his natural, the better it's going to be for him in general. So, let's see. Uh, not sure what that was uh, cancelling there momentarily. Drone very nearly going down. You've been looking for the pickoff on that. Is here we go. Maybe going to try to bust through this bunker. Doesn't actually happen. And we'll see another Overlord going down. That's the third Overlord this game that you has now picked off. It's actually, in terms of units dying, being very low number. One SCV, two Marines against two Lings and three Overlords. Obviously, the Hatchery got taken down as well. And we've seen another couple of Crows of Bars. Now, actually, SCV is going down and the Bunker falls. The film will turn and fight. It's going to be a bit of a micro war, kind of backwards and forwards as to how this is going to go. As we just think, honestly, though, again, the Ravagers just have so much damage output. I mean, the Marines are putting out a lot of damage on the Ravagers too, but they will still go down, or will they? I mean, it's getting very close, way closer than I ever thought it would be. Marines are still kind of cornering these Ravagers. Now they have nowhere to run to, and so Ravagers will go down a bit more quickly. It's a lot of gas that's just been lost here for impact. However, Euphermal can still only make three Marines at a time, and with these proxied racks, he has to be a bit careful if the Roaches come forward. However, back at home, he's been setting up, and he actually has a Cloak Banshee on the way. And actually, a Cloak Banshee is such a perfect follow-up, because with a Cloak Banshee set up, he's going to be able to sort of set up and go into a... Uh, you know, with a Cloak Banshee setup, he's going to be able to kind of defend against Roaches and also harass. It's going to be kind of, you know, he knocks kind of two birds out of the sky with the one stone because the Banshee is both defensive and aggressive. And that's going to be really nice for him. He's going to have a tank here as well, which will help. 
Is this Banshee going to come uh, towards the front? I love what he does. He realizes it to the natural and then up. So he's going to take the path that any of these units would take as well. He's going to find one Ravager already. And this is already going to be pretty bad. Impact knows that it's actually just going to be over. Because he's going to keep on losing units and has no follow-up to this. One base against one base. I thought this might be a bit better for Impact with the early openings. But it turns out to be Uthermal's game. GG. Game 2 to Uthermal.